Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back in to Chicanic. Up, everybody's having a great week. Today I am changing out the ignition module on this Echo PB580T. And the thing about it is, it has fire, so why am I doing it? But before we get into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments and I will reply to all the early commenters. So I had a customer bring in their Echo Backpack Blower. They've only had it for about two and a half years and they said it would run for a little while and it would die. And I checked it, I set it outside, I let it run and it ran for a good 12 minutes before it actually stopped running. So it could only be a couple things when it runs for that long period of time. So I immediately checked the fire whenever it dies and it didn't have any fire. So coils do one of two things. They either stop working completely or they run until they stop working completely. A lot of times people tell me that they check fire and it has this weird spark or light spark or different color spark. The fact is you either have spark or you don't have spark. So usually any spark is good spark. Now the good thing about Echo is, and you know I'm not partial to just Echo. I love my steel stuff too and you know, some of the Husqvarna stuff, not as much, but <laughs> Echo has a great warranty when it comes to homeowners and commercial. They have five-year homeowner warranty for any manufacturer defect, but lifetime warranty on the coil, which means they will replace your coil for free for the first five years. And after that five years, you have to pay for labor, but you still don't have to pay for the coil. Now the trick about it is, is you have to register your units. You have to have a date of purchase or showing where you bought it from whenever you take it in because without that, you can't get it done under warranty. Now at my shop, I make sure to register everything I sell. In fact, we service the machine out before it goes out the door and register it for the customer. That way they don't have to worry about it. Now the customer didn't buy this one for me. He actually lived in a different state when he bought it, but he did have his proof of purchase with a credit card receipt showing when he did. So I'm able to register it and fix it completely for free for him. So let's jump into this repair. Now you're probably watching this video if you did not register your unit and you are having to do it yourself, but the cool thing about it is it is super simple to do. So we just got to remove these screws. First, the ones holding the shroud on. We've got one up here. We got one on the other side one down there and then we've got a super secret screw can i show you yeah right there we're also going to remove the four bolts holding the rewind on so i'm going to pull out my owl tools six inch torque bit set i will leave a link in the description box below i love it it's got t7 through t40 and it works out great pull out my t27 here make everything a little quicker than doing it by hand secret screw down there. Oh, they're magnetic. That's very helpful. <laughs> okay, let's see. Unplug that and this will come right off just like that. And then yeah, the, the wire's free. Next thing I got to do, I got to remove the fuel tank because where I'm getting to is right back here and it's just much easier to get to if you remove the fuel tank. But it's super simple to do that too. You just flip your unit over like this and you got two bolts holding it on right there and two bolts holding it there. It's just this bracket that sits over the top of the fuel tank holding it in place and it comes off. off just like that. Now to show you the reason we removed the fuel tank because this plate right here is the one we want to remove taking that one screw out where you can see the ignition module wire goes to and that's where it's set up guys it's super easy to get to and there went my flashlight oh nope there it went back <laughs> so we're just going to take that plate off and get to our coil. 
All right, so now that we got our cover off, I want you to take note of how this kill wire is looped around this metal piece right here because the last thing you wanna do is get it all put back together and not have that in the right place and screw right through it. So just maybe take a snapshot with your phone or something, that way you know what's going on. I'm also gonna go ahead and take the kill wire out of this bolt just because I don't wanna have to finagle the uh, this big wire out through it. So I'm gonna unplug that and we're gonna take these two screws off to uh, get our old coil off. There you go. Just force it. <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and take our kill wire off. And there's some pliers. It's always better to push than pull. There we go. Now the only thing that really stinks about doing this, and if anybody from Echo is watching know that this makes me very unhappy every time I do it, is that the new coil doesn't come with any of the stuff that the old coil had on it. I gotta take the spark plug boot out and reinstall it on this one. I gotta put this grommet on there and this sheath. So the hardest part for me is getting this boot off because you just sort of, plus there's some trick. If you know a trick, leave a comment below. <laughs> is pulling it off. Ugh. Every time. It's so hard. Now, my little springy thing is still stuck in there and I gotta get it out. So I can try to go in through the bottom of the boot and maybe get my needle nose to get around it. I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be easier to go through this way since it was pulled out. I can get a hold of it on the uh, coiled part of it. There we go. Success! Next, this rubber sheet off. Now, I don't know if I even really need to take that off, but... Oh, can I even get it off? I don't know. No, that is stuck. Are you kidding me? This doesn't come off. Oh, there we go. Oh, once I broke the little piece of glue or something holding that on. There we go. Okay, let's try to get it on our new one. Should be easier. Oh, keep going, keep going. Get in your hole, get in your hole. Oh, well I got kink. Great. Should I just cut that off? <laughs> Maybe I should have started with that janky end first. That's what I'm gonna do. Start with the janky end. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now we're in. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Just work it, guys. You can do it. You can do it. I am so close. Ugh. I just can't get that last little bit. I'm seriously going to cut some off. <laughs> it's, it's sort of ridiculous. Okay. More. Oop. Working it back and forth here. Maybe I need some lube. I'm lubing it. Let's see if this makes it any better. I sure hope so. Goodness. I hope it doesn't make it harder. <laughs> oh, that's going pretty good. Come on, just that last little bit. Oh, oh, that's it guys. Lube, it makes everything better. 
All right, next we are going to put our boot in, little uh, metal spring thing back in that goes over the plug. Now, some people, they like to put the boot on first, then put this on and uh, pull it back over. I don't do it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and make a hole about, you know, I measure it out to about where I think it's gonna be. Now, there is a special tool for this, but when I looked it up the other day, it was like $60, okay, <laughs> for the Echo brand tool. I, I am not paying that, so I've got me a little hole started. I need to get one of my little pokey tools to, oop, moving y'all around. Get one of my pokey tools to do this best, but I don't have one right now. Close. So let's see if I can hold it in place. Pinch it down. Oh, get it, get in there. I'm not gonna say this is the easiest thing to do. I'm gonna turn everything around though, so I can do it with my right hand. There we are. Okay. So you wanna get into the middle of the wire and have it hanging right on the end there, just like that. Hopefully y'all can see that pretty good. Put it next to there, show you, just like that. And we're gonna get our boot, and the secret is, what is it guys? It's more lube, lots of lube. So I'm gonna fill that up with some lube, and I'm gonna just stick my needle nose straight up in there. I'm gonna hold it against my bench, and I'm gonna stretch. And it'll go on so easy this way, stretch. Twist, stretch, take it out, hold it all together, get it over the end, and it slides right in every time, just like that, so easy. So the flywheel that the ignition module is against is right up in here. Now, I don't want it to have the magnets towards the coil as I'm putting it in because that makes it difficult. So I'm just gonna grab a screw here, and as you can see, the magnets are right there. So I'm just gonna turn it. And I do have my spark plug out to make it easy to turn until there is no magnetized anything right there. So when we put it in, it'll be much easier. Now, I've got my two screws here and we know that it's gonna sit like this. It needs to come down a little bit. Go ahead and put my two screws in. And I'm going to loosely tighten it up in. All right, I got one in. I got two going in. Like I said, I am not tightening these down yet. Next, I'm gonna grab a business card because you wanna set the coil at 10 thousandths. It's 10, 20, 30. You've got 10 for the coil, 20 that we don't use anymore because nothing has points and condenser, and 30 for the spark plug. So I'm just gonna get in there and I can stick it in this way because that's about how far the width is on these two legs that come out for a... Uh... My card is too long. So... Sorry, Mower Medic, you're gonna have to send me another card because I had to uh, cut it in half. All right, now we got it underneath there. Now I'm going to turn the flywheel. I know y'all can't see this, but oh, see now it just suction cupped from the magnets up to the flywheel and I can tighten her down. Just like that. Now we're gonna pull our card out. And we got good clearance. But the kill wire's gotta go through the grommet too. So remember it's got its little hump here, so we're gonna put this back together like that. And we're gonna stick that in the grommet there. That's gonna go over that little spot. And we're good to go to put our cover back on. Just like that. Is everything like going through here, here? 
put it at a 90. Oh, we gotta come up through here. This is always the fun thing. Oh my gosh, you can't turn it around. <laughs> it's got this stuff on it and all this grease. Uh, stick that up in that hole. All right, that goes through there like that. This comes back here. Make sure to get everything nice and snug in its little spots. We're gonna put that screw back in. it back in its holes and we got it installed yeah yeah now we're gonna put our gas tank back on bracket back on this is always sort of a fun one to line everything up right I'm exaggerating completely on this one <laughs> it isn't really fun at all Okay, I think, yeah, those are lined up pretty good. Oh, come on, get in the hole, get in the hole. Oh. Pulling out the tool for this one. Come on, there we go. We got one loosely in there. A loose one. Start our front ones before we tighten everything down. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our shroud and our rewind back on. Is anybody else like me? Get done with something and you see this screw sitting there and you're like, did that go in what I was just working on or was that part of the mess of stuff I worked on last time? I don't think it went in this one. You guys will let me know, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, we're gonna check for fire to make sure everything's good and uh, that's the fix. All right, so I got my spark tester hooked up. I got it connected to the muffler and to the plug boot. I do have my plug out so it's easy to pull. Hopefully y'all can see it through this little window right here. I'm gonna turn the light off so hopefully it's easier to see. If you wanna get a spark tester like mine, I do leave a link to one in the description box below this video. I got tons of fire. I don't know if y'all can see that though. you did. Popped off. All right guys, so that's the fix. She smoked a little bit because she was flooded from all the times I pulled on her when she had no spark, but she is ready to go now and hopefully this video will save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash chicanic. Find us on Instagram at The Real Chicanic, where you will see things I do not post on other social media. And find us at chicanic.com, where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.